Hello, Terry Singh. You are the real-time analyst at Advastor Research and also contribute to virtualization.com. How would you define virtualization? Virtualization uh, spreads across uh, several domains. And when you talk about virtualization today, one, it is not a new phenomenon. It is, has always existed in the industry for the past uh, 40 odd years. And today when you're seeing virtualization, it's a hype today, but it is coming to x86 uh, model and then you can segment it into different uh, domains. You can get onto server virtualization, desktop virtualization, network virtualization, data, application, and, and, and out several other forms of virtualization, which uh, are, are, it's a broader topic to discuss. Do you think the term virtualization is too abstract, making it hard to grasp for what it's all about? Uh, it depends. Uh, if you talk to the technologists, they are really excited about it. But if you talk to a layman, and when I say layman, I'm talking to uh, people who are decision makers and are not really worse uh, with, 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 with what virtualization is, it can be a confusing topic. So I think uh, when you say virtualization, you need to define virtualization from that business perspective. For example, uh, if you want to explain it to uh, 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 IT managers or, uh, or to, uh, you know, on a board, uh, C-level people at the client side, you would want to explain what virtualization is in terms of the business perspective. So you need to define or explain virtualization as uh, it creates flexibility in your business model, it provides a high available infrastructure, and it creates, uh, it, uh, it can be a competitive advantage to uh, uh, a 24-7 kind of infrastructure. Do you think many companies have really understood that? I think it's a very big challenge and I talk to a lot of high-end clients and we talk to uh, 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 consume, uh, the community and the consumers and there is uh, an element of a little bit of, of, of a misunderstanding and, and also the market developments, how they are moving. There is a lot of information today and I, I'm not just a real-time analyst, but I am also a blogger and I, sometimes I'm blogging about real uh, news and sometimes you have five, 15 news per day. And I think it's very hard to grasp and digest that kind of information. We as people who watch uh, this trend 24-7, are sometimes flabbergasted. So I can imagine the pressures that our user community has uh, in grasping what virtualization is. What advice do you give these information overload victims when selecting their virtualization solutions in order to avoid the typical pitfalls? I think there are a couple of things you should need to do. Get uh, uh, an independent advice. Uh, talk to your neighbor uh, because uh, he would probably be using virtualization. It is prevalent. Talk to your own people. I would not be surprised if your own IT staff is pretty much aware about virtualization. So I think as a business leader, uh, you need to do two things. You need to, uh, do, you need to internalize, you need to uh, externalize. When you internalize, you look into your infrastructure and you're going to discover a lot, of, a lot of things that are happening. And two, externalize, you go to your, uh, your trusted independent analysts and consultants but also get opinions from the people and get their best practices of what they have done with virtualization. If you look at the current market with its many acquisitions, successful IPOs, small startups with often immature niche products raising impressive funding, this makes the choice even harder. How do you see this market evolve in the near future? I think what's going to happen is in the coming six to nine months, you're going to see, uh, I'm, I'm, going to call this, uh, I'm going to call this a phenomenon an implosion. Uh, a black hole effect, which is going to mean that uh, several big firms are going to uh, absorb these little firms who are offering uh, isolated uh, solutions. For example, uh, I'm just going to give you a good example of a company I'm going to be talking tomorrow. It's StackSafe. They're coming up with a change management uh, 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 a module they have developed with Zen. So I'm not saying that it's going to be <laughs> acquired, but uh, there is going to be an ecosystem eventually where large vendors are going to come with a solution set that is going to have uh, an, an address end-to-end -end, uh, solutions. So I think uh, adoption uh, needs to be taken uh, carefully. Uh, people need to take into account that they should take hypervisor in account and go on with virtualization. 
and, and make sure that they make wise choices in terms of the current trend with mergers and acquisitions and, and wait when necessary to, to go for a complete package because that's when you are going to have, you're going to, you can t take the advantage of the licensing and you might be getting cheaper prices for okay. those products. Terry, you already mentioned hypervisors. Do you consider their development and adoption as an important evolution and, and when would you recommend their use? Hypervisor is the base uh, technology you need to use to adopt virtualization. Hypervisor has always existed in the mainframe, so it is a base technology. Um, when you're looking at the other management tools, uh, they do not offer bottlenecks, but the interoperability, uh, uh, meaning that when you have a heterogeneous uh, virtual infrastructure, when you have a VMware or a Microsoft Hyper-V, which is going to be released, uh, somewhere in August and when you have a you have a mature product from Citrix Send Server 4.0 coming up and uh, you need to be able to manage these uh, technologies but you need a hypervisor first and there will be several sets of hypervisors within your domains uh, when you come with a management solution which is the second step which is the virtualization 2.0 uh, which you may have followed in my uh, speech today in the Profos uh, virtualization, international virtualization event in Belgium uh, is that the heterogeneity has to address uh, and the interoperability of uh, moving virtual machines across because this flexibility is eventually the competitive advantage of any company that is going to adopt virtualization. What about the awareness and virtualization skill set you witness at your customers? Does your mindset easily make the shift between the physical and virtual approach within both the currently split business units and more technical departments? They are realizing it. They are seeing it happen. Uh, it is very important. I think it's a very good question you pose, and that is exa exactly was uh, the topic of my discussion today, that the business domains and the IT domains and the convergence of these two is inevitable. It has to happen. Not that it should, it has to happen. And the mindset, uh, when, when these two converge, there is going to be collision. And what we are trying to do and advise to our clients or to, to our high-end clients uh, uh, is to try to uh, evangelize internally and that's exactly what I mean when I said that internalization is very crucial to adoption because externalization is going to deliver you data which you can you should be able to deploy. Terry, what virtualization companies should we be watching besides the big vendors you already mentioned? Oh, uh, I think I don't have a list but let me just try to get this thing out of the top of my head. I did uh, draw a list. Uh, there is no 10 top 10 list. Uh, I have seen a lot of vendors and analyst firms and research groups trying to talk and trying to make a catchy title with 10. Uh, I'm going to say a top 100 and a couple of uh, uh, companies like Embotics, uh, Marathon Technologies, um, uh, StackSafe for example, um, uh, uh, security companies like Blue Lane, uh, Reflex uh, Security, Cadbird. Uh, these are several. There are several companies to watch. But I think we should try to address this uh, question in more in a way that, in a security domain, you have uh, several companies like Reflex, uh, Cadbird, um, and uh, uh, Blue Lane. And a lifecycle management VMware is coming up with this new product called Stage Manager. But like you said, okay, we're not talking about these big vendors. You have companies like Embotics. You have companies like. Uh, Manage IQ, uh, you have companies like, uh, uh, there was another one, uh, Fortisphere. So there are several vendors who are coming up with really cool solutions, very good, innovative solutions, and all coming out of going back to the core of that holy grail, I'm going to call, which is Zen. Zen, they're all developing their products on Zen, compatible with Zen server, uh, with, with VMware. So I think the innovation is taking place in this open source uh, uh, Zen which took birth in Cambridge. Another exclusive interview brought to you by virtualization.com.